Right, I've um, bought a ER40 um, collet chuck system for my ML7 lathe and I would like to just show you how I've mounted it and got it running true to within half a thou. You can buy ER40 um, collet chucks that will screw directly onto the Myford ML7 or the Super 7 um, but I find they're quite expensive to buy and also um, when you buy them uh, they sometimes can uh, run out quite a bit so if you do this setup it's um, about half the cost of one of those plus you can get it running within like half a thou so I bought the actual collet chuck um, on eBay um, from China and it was about £15 and that was including postage. Now when I bought it, it was one of those with a straight shank on the back. Um, I hacksawed that off, put the collet chuck in the um, three jaw chuck and um, clocked it in and faced off the back nice and square. Um, they're quite hard to turn, but you can turn them okay with carbide tips. Next, I've got a billet of mild steel, which is about 95 millimeters in diameter and about 27 mil thick. Um, faced it off, uh, cleaned it up, and then I drilled three equally spaced holes to accept um, eight millimeter Allen bolts so they would go through. Next I bored um, this diameter here for the um, collet chuck um, 20 millimeters deep and um, I left it about 50 thou undersize. So at this stage the um, collet chuck won't um, actually fit in there and um, that's for boring out later when the um, back plate is onto the machine. Next I drilled and tapped six millimeter holes equally spaced in between the allen bolts in three positions around the diameter. Um, then I turned or I bored a um, register diameter on the back of the billet. Um, I think I did it to about 54 millimeter. You can choose um, whatever size uh, you want that will be suitable. And then I um, bought a a plain back plate to fit the Myford ML7 and um, faced it off and turned the register diameter to suit the billet and um, screwed, uh, drilled and uh, tapped for the 8mm bolts um, tightened that one on um, securely and um, then I put it on the lathe again and um, tightened it up and then bored this diameter out here to accept the collet chuck um, it was about uh, one thou clearance um, before fitting the collet chuck I um, machined two grooves inside the bore and they were filled with Loctite 638 um, all the way round and on the back of the uh, shoulder and then the collet chuck was pushed in um, to the um, bore um, check the um, concentricity um, I got mine like within half a thou and then let the Loctite dry one thing to watch out for when you're using Loctite 638 is the speed in which it sets. Um, you've literally got a few seconds where you can move the parts um, before it goes off rock solid and you won't be able to get the components apart again. And um, 
like I said, it's a high strength retaining compound and um, what I did with this was to check that the components go together um, smoothly a few times without the Loctite and when I was confident it would do this then I used the Loctite and I did that on this one when the back plate was on the lathe. But for added um, strength, I then took this off of the lathe, set the um, bench drill, um, used a cobalt drill um, to the diameter of the hole there so it doesn't damage the thread, and um, drilled down into the diameter of the um, ER collet chuck um, by about a millimeter so it gave a nice indent in each of these holes and that is for the um, uh, grub screw, six millimeter grub screws which were then screwed in nice and tight also because of the machined diameters on this setup you can use a nice long um, six millimeter grub screw in there and um, I think I used uh, ones that were about 12 millimeter long and they had a, um, a cup end on them which screws nicely into the drilled indents. Next I machined these um, 24 equally spaced indexing holes around the um, back plate diameter and um, I did that by holding on this diameter here uh, in a three jaw chuck um, my 125 millimeter chuck and that one has um, a 125 millimeter back plate on obviously and I forgot to mention this one's a 125 millimeter back plate as well um, so I used my plunger pin assembly on um, the chuck and um, my tool post drill and then just went round and did all the holes on this back plate. So the reason I chose another 125mm diameter back plate is so that I can use my um, plunger pin assembly on both the three jaw chuck and this um, ER40 collet chuck and I don't have to make another pin use the same setup and um, it gives me the opportunity of doing equally spaced holes when I'm using this one or the um, three jaw chuck so this is the setup I used to do the indexing holes around my back plate um, I used the existing MyFord indexing back plate, my plunger pin assembly, my tool post drill with a Jacob chuck connected to a flexi drive which was then connected to a Bosch electric drill and then I did the centre drill holes all the way round, um, a pilot drill all the way round to a certain depth um, zeroed on the clock and then the finishing drill which is the same diameter hole as this one here all the way round and um, that's what makes this a great um, back plate to have uh, the Myford one um, when you've got one you can do all the back plates on your chucks and if you keep the same diameter back plate for all the chucks then you can use the same plunger pin assembly in all of them and um, everything is very versatile so this is the collet chuck on my lathe and um, when you come to use a collet chuck on the MyFord ML7 there's no way of um, locking the spindle um, like you have on the MyFord Super 7. You have a pin in the back which you push in and you can undo the chuck or do these nuts up here. So what I've done is I've made this tool here out of half inch aluminium 
and drilled and tapped uh, with a quarter UNC thread there and put a brass um, lug or pin uh, which protrudes out the side there and this one uh, locates in any of these three allen bolt heads um, so the pin goes into the socket of the allen bolt and then you can use the spanner on there like that the um, tool rests against the shoulder of the collet and then you can use it to undo like that and for tightening it's the same process locate the pin in the allen bolt it goes the other way obviously and um, you hold it nice and square the tools resting on the collet shoulder and then you just use it to tighten up the collet also when you come to take the collet chuck off of the um, lathe there is no way of actually holding it firmly to undo it but you can use this same tool um, you take out the brass pin and um, screw it into the other side like that um, and then you can use it like that in the allen bolt resting on the shoulder of the collet and use it as a lever to undo the um, collet jack like that So there you have my ER40 collet chuck set up. Um, this time I put it on, it's running at about a thou um, run out, which I'm happy with. Um, and I have the ability to use the same plunger pin assembly as my three jaw chuck um, for doing equally spaced holes around the diameter of work or for milling operations. Um, so it's a very useful tool to have.